here, this is just an old school like skill building exercise to help you get comfortable with stalls. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Good. Well, hey, welcome back to the finer points, you guys. What a strange time we're living through, huh? I've been doing a lot more of this flying from the right seat, teaching the camera stuff. And um, a lot of that, by the way, is going to end up in our ground school app. If you haven't seen that, there's a three-day free trial. But today I want to show you guys the way I introduce stalls because, you know, stalls are something that scare a lot of new pilots. You know, it's when you ask the wing to stop flying. So there's nothing particularly comfortable about that. Uh, but I'm going to show you today that if you, if you know exactly where to look and you start with something relatively simple like this exercise here, uh, then you can get comfortable with it. You can find the visual reference you need. And then when things get a little bit more extreme, you'll have the tools required to be successful. Like I said, we finish our clearing turns. We finish our cruise checklist. Let's just go ahead and slow down to minimum controllable airspeed. Um, I like to do it clean. The reason is it gets the nose higher up and it allows you to practice with the Lindbergh reference a little more than it would if you had flaps. Um, because remember, if you had flaps, you're gonna increase the angle of attack, which means you know, you're gonna be pitched down just a little bit more to get the same amount of lift. Um, all right, so here we are slowing down to minimum controllable airspeed. We're 3,300 feet. And we're just trying to get a feel for what the stall break looks like and where we should be looking during the stall. Now, hopefully, you can't see forward because I can't see forward, so hopefully we're in the same boat here. Now, the Lindbergh reference is this area right here. So, and keep in mind, by the way, guys, that uh, as per the ACS, they don't really want you doing what I'm doing here. They don't want you flying around with the stall horn on. Um, so if you're doing slow flight, you want to be faster than this. But here, this is just an old school like skill building exercise to help you get comfortable with stalls. So this is the Lindbergh reference right here. I'll give you a little X. The camera's really mounted too high here. Uh, you can see the horizons all the way up here, way, way above my mark. But really, the Lindbergh reference is this whole area. And the most important part is you follow the horizon down here around the corner toward where I made this red mark as you need to. Just because you can't see over the nose doesn't mean you should lose the data you can get from knowing where the horizon is. Um, now, I'm giving you a little mark there because I don't know exactly what your horizon looks like. But the idea is you're looking at the horizon. That's the area you're going to find it, though. And watch this. When I let go of left rudder, watch what happens. Do you guys see that? Right? Now I push right rudder. Now, I don't have to look at the ball. I don't have to look at the ball. If I, if I don't see yaw out there in my Lindbergh reference, then I'm not yawing. Watch this, let go of the rudder. There it is, add rudder. So next time you're wondering how much rudder should I have in a climb, you should have enough so that there's no yaw in your Lindbergh reference. Period, that's it. <laughs> Who needs a ball? All right, now once you're here, notice we have a little bit of power, not a ton of power, but we've got like 1900 RPM. That's to give you a little bit of a left turning tendency. Now, we don't want an enormous left turning tendency because we're practicing here. You'll get the enormous left turning tendency when you do your power on departure stalls. Now, I'm looking at my Lindbergh reference. You look at your Lindbergh reference. Let me see if I can get you off the clouds there. Okay, good, like this. And then we're just gonna pull the airplane into small little stalls and release it just like this. Practicing, not allowing any yaw to happen in the Lindbergh reference. Watch this, that's the stall warning horn screaming. There's the stall, there's the recovery. All right, now we're flying again, right? Notice what happens in the recovery. It's the stick goes forward. Did you see me touch the power? Negative, you did not see me touch the power. So let's try that one more time. Let's get that stall horn back on. All right, ready? One, two, three. And pull, watch this, watch what breaks this. I'm looking at the Lindbergh reference, you're looking at the Lindbergh reference. There's the brake, stick forward. You see that? Not too far forward, we're not staring at the ground, just a little bit forward. Now, when you get here, this will help you practice the most common error of all in slow flight or MCA. And that is what you see here. A 50 to 100 foot per minute descent like death by a thousand cuts, if I'm your examiner, I will just sit here and kill time. Because if you're descending at 50 feet per minute, 
in 10 minutes, you're going to be a lot lower, right? <laughs> so remember, practice climbing with power. So what I would want you to do here is keep the stall horn on. Go ahead and add a little power, a little bit of right rudder to, to counteract those left turning tendencies. And see if you can climb like this with the stall horn on. Now, I'm not getting to climb quite yet. A little more power, a little more right rudder, a little more power. I'm looking at my Lindbergh reference. I'm coordinated. So if I inadvertently stall again here, it's just going to do the same thing it did a minute ago. But that's really what I want to see. As long as you can get back on the positive side of zero in your vertical speed, so you're actually climbing, and you can, you know, then then I'm confident enough that if you notice a descent, you'll be able to stop it and fly out of it. All right. So this is one common error, that death by a thousand cuts thing. The other one, of course, is not using enough rudder. Uh, but the solution there is quite obvious because if you're not using enough rudder in the stall, the wing will break um, <coughs> to whichever side you're not using enough rudder on. All right, you guys. Well, thanks so much for flying along with me today. I hope you guys are back up flying and doing it safely. Um, huge thanks to the sponsors for their support of this show and to the patrons. Um, tons of bonus content going to Patreon during this pandemic. Um, check it out if you haven't. We're even doing small group study sessions. You get four hours for the price of one. Uh, pretty crazy stuff over there on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash learn TFP. Big thanks to you, the best fans on the internet. I got a free video for you at learnthefinerpoints.com and a free three-day trial of our ground school app. You guys are the best fans on the internet. Thanks for watching this video. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share with your friends, check all those YouTube boxes. Um, but most importantly, until next time, be safe, fly your best.